Welcome back into the ASUG News Studio. My name is Tom Wilgum. I'm co-editorial director of ASUGnews.com. Well, we are very happy to have in here an analyst, our first analyst of the day, Frederick Tunval from Ovum. Welcome. Thank you. He is not from France, as I found out. I <laughs> thought you were from France. You're actually of Swedish origins, but now living in New York, now that we've got that out of the way. Yep. Uh, Frederick, tell us a little bit about the research area you cover, and then we'll get into kind of the big news of, of the day and go from there. Sure. Um, so I'm part of Ovum's Information Management Group. Uh, I have a key focus this year on self-service products, mobile mm -hmm. products, kind of, um, you know, kind of new trends, innovations, yep. um, and things around that. Looking at analytics too. How can we make it easier for users um, to utilize these products right. and harness all this data we have? Well, it's great because you have that broad perspective, and all of us here are kind of intimately focused on <laughs> SAP, but you've come in with that perspective. Maybe a good place to start before we get into the news is, where do you see SAP, you know, and among the, the SASs and the Cognoses and the Hyperions of the world and what they've been doing? Do you think their strategy is, is a good one that they, they've been pursuing as of late? Oh, well, definitely. I mean, if you look at the BI stack, right, mm -hmm. and kind of their BI offerings, I definitely think they're, they're one of the vendors we think as the leaders, one of the top vendors. Um, mm -hmm. I think their message has changed a lot. Um, they're looking more and more at being looking at the BI consumer uh, than maybe looking at the back office person who right. is very technical. You right. know, and I, I kind of like the messaging. I think it puts SAP in a new light, um, and I think it's a really good way to go for them. Uh, and I think a lot of the things I've seen here today in my, you know, the keynote, yep. my meetings, uh, kind of resonates with that. The Exactly, that's a great point. Never really thought about that. The, the power users, it's not a, a huge move away from the power users, but certainly they are, especially with mobility, right? I mean, that is how many iPad demos have we all seen, right? And that's <laughs> not, that is not aimed at the power user. So you see that as well. well I think it's both. It's both. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the power user can definitely, um, the consumption of data on mobile device, I think, is for anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, the power user can use it still. Mm -hmm. I still think he's going to, he or she, is going to want to sit at their desk sometimes and do, you know, their scripting. And Wait, what? That's <laughs> like heresy. Don't say that. No one uses desktop PCs anymore. It's always going to be like that. And I think in my meetings today, too, I think as a Pete strategy moving forward, they are very aware of that. They're right. not saying we're going to do everything mobile. Right. Right? We're going to do everything in the cloud. I think they're more and more looking to be kind of, we can do s a large chunk of it in the cloud, yep. but there's still going to be people who want to do it on-premise. Uh, and I think that it's a very important message, too, that people have to have that option, especially if you look at vertical like financials um, and banking and stuff like that. Those people are going to hold on to the data. They're not going to upload it to a cloud somewhere else. So do you think, Sanjay was actually talking about that we had him in earlier, about that okay. hybrid strategy. Do you think in your research that that's going to resonate, that that message will actually come down like you, like you just described, the bank who's on-premise and yes. not getting rid of that, but Yes, I, no, I definitely think so. I think uh, it's very naive to say that we're going to put everything in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain, at least now, I mean, who knows, 10 years from now. Right. But at least now, there are certain uh, industries, healthcare is another one, where you need certain points of the business is going to be on premise, and that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very aware of that if you're a vendor today. So um, I, I totally agree with Sunny on that. So. Mm -hmm. So the EPM on-demand news backed yes. by uh, HANA, which is everything's getting the HANA treatment lately. Yes. Uh, SAP's obviously clearly excited. I think maybe that news, if you dig a little deeper, there's more news there than just EPM on-demand, you know, BPC, that whole thing. Yep. Did you get that sense that there's actually, is this actually, I mean, no, SAP definitely. uses Game Changer, but <laughs> I, maybe not that, but that this yeah. is actually pretty big news. Yeah, I mean, obviously Game Changer is a buzzword, right? right. So, and I, I agree to some extent, but I think it tells a bigger story of uh, SAP right now. Uh, that tells them, it expands on their cloud story, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen them more and more in the cloud. And I think another one that I was talking about earlier is the, the BI consumer, or the EPM consumer in this case. Uh, and I also think the mobility part of it, it adds to that story. And I, I think their strategy going forward and ha has been to look at mobile, look at cloud, look at big data. and um, and I think the, the product it uh, showed us today kind of resonates with that a lot. So um, I, I, that's kind of what I take away from this. I mean, it, right. it, it, it looks like a good product too. I still, and I, I think they're doing this down the road, but I still wanted them to add some more functionality and stuff. Right. But 
um, as a start at a 1.0 version, it looks really good. And I definitely think there's uh, people in the EPM industry that, or EPM, using EPM in their industry is going to find it really useful. So, Do you think SAP has the necessary cloud credibility to win over customers who are like SAP, you know, they just do on-premise. Do you think they're getting better now? I definitely think they're getting better. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're there yet, but you have to keep on keep that mes message going. Um, I mean, they're not, uh, I guess it's like a Salesforce maybe. Sure. That is very cloud, you know, that's all they say. Right. Uh, but out of the larger vendors, it's definitely one of the vendors in the BI space, analytics space, has done it the best the last couple of years, I think. And every event I've been to in the last year is, you know, it's a clear message and they're actually producing products in that space too, so. Right. Um, one of the other interesting things, you did a, a summer research about self-service BI. Yes. And I'm wondering, you know, you hear that thrown, thrown around a lot. Yep. Is that really happening? Or is our companies able to tap into self-service BI? And what does that mean to you from, a, from an analyst perspective sure. researching this? Um, I, I think, um, we see more and more adoption. I don't think it's at the levels we want it to be yet because people who use self-service BI might not know there is self-service BI or who's going to use it. Um, but I think the more vendors uh, get involved in that kind of messaging mm -hmm. and kind of they get their salespeople to maybe instead of going to the CXO level, look at line of business and stuff instead. Right. Um, I think we're going to see more and more adoption. I think mm. definitely that's where we're going. I don't know if we're there yet. Uh, right. But there's definitely a lot of great products in, in that space right now. So is it is it buzzy though a little bit? I mean, is it kind of like the cloud in that self-service BI can mean one thing to one company and another, or, or do you see a, a clear definition uh, from your point of view of what self-service BI should be? I, I still think it's a little bit. I mean, there's a thought behind it, right? That you don't have IT involved. That right. you're a user, you can go and get all this data and you can analyze it by yourself. Right. I don't know if that's true yet. Um, I still think you need some involvement from IT. Right. Uh, but I definitely think for the consumption of data and doing certain types of uh, analytics, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, I mean, there are people can use it right now. And, um, but we're not where we want to be yet. Right. But, but I think we're going there, definitely. We heard about HANA, you can't come to an event. We did? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, that was interesting that Bridget had brought that up and the crowd was a little lukewarm to it at her introducing Sanjay. And I'm wondering from your point of view, what you're seeing, is it still just too early to, to seem really, uh, well, I guess yeah. my, my larger point is, yeah. will HANA on under, you know, underneath EPM on demand, do people even know like what that's gonna, what that can deliver? I think that's one of the biggest problems, right? That we hear a lot about HANA, but mm. I don't know if people know what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like, it's a database, it's an appliance, it's right. a system, you know. So is that an SAP messaging problem, or is that just people? I think it's, it's more that technology it's ahead of where people are learning curves sure. um, more than it is. I mean, the messaging has to, I think it's more that so EPM on demand can be a good, because um, we're looking for, I think, more and more looking for killer apps, right? We're looking for applications you can run on top of HANA that's actually going to have an impact on the business. Right. Because if you talk about HANA, you know, have something at the front end to kind of, um, get business value, you're not going to, and I think that that's where SAP needs to be a little bit better at creating these applications that's going to revolutionize business built on top of HANA. So. Right. And yet HANA, though, if you look at some of the Sanjay slides, is so all-encompassing. I mean, it's like the core of their new stack. And yet, you know, can you kind of one-off HANA? Not really. I mean, uh, you, you got to kind of be all in or not. So will that be a problem for SAP, do you think? Or No, I, I think, um, I mean, because you have a HANA, um, you can u utilize HANA in a cloud environment too. Uh, I think that's a good way to do it. Um, it doesn't have to be on-premise. It doesn't have to be that you go in and you clear your whole stack. Right. Um, even if you have an SAP stack already, or if you don't. Um, but I think it's a f some people, they're gonna do that. Right. And some um, organizations gonna go the cloud route. And I think we're talking five, 10 years from now. Y you can't say next year, it's everybody's gonna be <laughs> HANA, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, think, I think definitely, I think SAP has a great product in HANA. Um, and I, I think their messaging is pretty clear, at least from my point of view. All right, so day one is almost wrapped here. The show floor is, will come alive again for the partner uh, party. Exciting, yeah. Um, what would be your one takeaway from day one that you would uh, give to ASUG members who are not here or watching? What was the one big message you got? 
Well, since I concentrate a lot on mobile, uh, mm -hmm. I really like uh, SAP's mobile story right now, and also uh, my meetings with executives, um, kind of seeing what they, they have ahead, like they're looking to, because one of my issues I had, one of my complaints is that it's very iOS, iPad focused. Sure. Um, but they assured me that it will be on <laughs> Android and uh, other devices later on too. So I, I, I think that, um, I definitely think the, the mobile story is for me like the big talking point today. Um, but I'm biased by my own research right. too. Yeah. Well, Frederick, thank you very much for coming by. We appreciate it. For more interviews with SAP Newsmakers and ASUG members, go to asuganline.com as well as ASUG TV YouTube page. And thank you for watching.